well, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Good morning, and welcome to another session with Elizabeth Ann Ministries. Another beautiful Wednesday morning, we give God praise and honor. I am Elizabeth Ann, and I want to welcome you. Um, I thank God for another day, and I thank God for the opportunity to come before you and to minister to you and pass on what God is saying to us for this week. Amen. We're still on the message of being broken. The Lord said to me to, um, if you remember from the session last week, that um, I we are to prioritize God. Put him first. Seek his kingdom and what he's saying. And also, I want to let you know that Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, truly, there is none other. Jesus truly is the answer. And so I want to encourage you with that this morning. Amen. He also said to encourage the people to lean on me. And so this week, as we continue with being broken, God said to show you how to walk out of that spirit how to go forward, how to go through this storm, how to apply the word of God, and how to be victorious, even though your night may be long. Remember, we had the scripture, Psalms 30, talking about weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So I am to put you in remembrance of that, because we are to put God in remembrance of his word. And his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So we're going to go forward in walking through this thing. You know, um, as we continue to go um, forward and uh, go through the pains and the torments, the um, situation that we're going through, in what capacity we are broken, because there's being brokenhearted, like we said, we mentioned some of those um, situations, there's being distressed, um, situations in our marriage relationships, uh, family relationships, being divisive. We talked about being depressed and um, someone losing a loved one or someone close to them still being in grief. But we want to also talk about, you know, those persons being manipulated and intimidated uh, there are many issues and problems, miscommunications that we go through, and sometimes we don't know how to come out of it. We don't know how to walk through it. Um, sometimes it takes us to the point where we lose our minds and we break down, we get confused. And so God wants to also show you how to get out of it. We call on the Lord because he is still our refuge. Let's read Psalm 121 as we cry unto God. It says, I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And he will not allow your foot to slip, it says. He who keeps you will not slumber. He's always awake. He's always aware of what we're going through. He sees all. He knows all. He hears all. He is God Almighty, the creator of us all. And behold, he says, he will keep Israel. You will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will protect you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will guard you going out and your coming in and everything that you do from this time forth and forever. And he's not saying this to um, the saved. He's saying this to everyone who can read this word and believe this word and stand on this word. Okay? And so he wants us to understand and know that we can be equipped by turning to God and asking him for help. That's who we look. We look up. We look up because Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but also God says he reigns on the just and the unjust. Amen? 
So this is for everyone who will look towards God for help. He wants you to turn to him. In walking with God, we pray. You know, Romans 12, and I want to put you in remembrance of that scripture that we had last week. We're still continuing on from last week. I want to remind you that in um, Romans 12, 12, it continues to tell us what to do while we're going through. It says, rejoicing in hope, we are to be patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. And we are to be seeking God for guidance. We are to be seeking him for the answers. God, what do I do if you're still in your broken state? And praise God for some of us who has already come out this week. But there are others who may not know what to do. You know, I get calls sometimes from persons who are asking, how do I get out of this? What do I do? And I usually tell them, let all the poison out first. Cry if you must. I, I find myself crying when I'm broken. Cry if you must. Let all the poison out. What do you feel like doing? You feel like screaming? You scream. Let it all out. Sometimes that helps. Exhale. Let it go. Amen. Psalms, Isaiah 40, forgive me. Isaiah 40 tells us, to wait on the Lord. Okay? So while we are waiting, we're still praying and seeking him. It tells us in Isaiah 40 and verse 31 um, that we are to wait on the Lord. Okay? Let me read that for you. And I'm going to read the Amplified Version. All right? Because God's word is a lap unto our feet, it shows us the way out. We look to the word of God. We look to God. We look to Jesus. But those who wait for the Lord, who expect, look for, hope in him will gain new strength and renew their power. They will lift up their wings, rise up close to God like eagles, arising toward the sun. They will run and become and not become weary. They will walk and not grow tired. And, you know, the word of God also tells us, let the weak say I am strong. So we got to pull ourselves out of this situation. We can't allow it to stay long within us because it will keep us down. And, you know, the enemy doesn't want us to come out of this. He came to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus came that we might have life and have it abundantly. And, you know, Hebrews 13 tells us that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is our help, it says in um, verse 6, Hebrews 13. The Lord is our help in the time of need, the word of God says. So take comfort and be encouraged and confidently say, confidently say he is your helper. Amen. I want to um, relay a story in the book of Acts where in Peter's ministry, he came upon this person. I'm going to read it in Acts 9. And we're going to start from verse, in the Amplified Version, of course. I love the Amplified. It breaks it up for us and explains a lot. that We don't have to figure it out. Amen. In verse 32, it says, Now as Peter was traveling throughout the land, he went down to visit the saints, God's people who lived in Lydda. And there he found a man named Anus, who had been bedridden for eight years and was paralyzed. My God, you could imagine being in a position where you can't move for eight years. You figured you're going to stay in that state. Huh? You're looking for help and don't know which way to turn. That was a long night. Eight years, he couldn't move. He was paralyzed. I'm sure he prayed and asked, God, how do I get out of this? Someone help me. My God. Peter said to him, Anus, Jesus Christ heals you. And he got up and took his bed. My God made up his bed, it says. And immediately, Anus, he got up, it says. And then all who lived at little, guess what? And the plain of Sharon saw what had happened to him. And they turned to the Lord. Salvation was won in this move. Someone is waiting on you to get up. 
because they're going to need your help to help them get out of it. The Lord sometimes allows us to go through our experiences so that we can help others. We have got to mature in Christ and our Christian growth so that we can conquer and overcome. Also, so that we can assist others and help them grow. They're waiting on us to give them the answer. So we got to go through because we can't take someone where we've never been. Okay? And so I want to encourage you, if you're still in your brokenness, turn to God. Cry out, let all the poison out. Seek him, get into his word. And wait, wait on the Lord, be still, get in a quiet place and hear what he has to say so that he could bring you out. We apply the word of God and we put God in remembrance of his word because he says it will not return unto him void. It will accomplish where it is sent and we send his word to our situation. I praise God because I want to testify again. You know, I always got a testimony. I love helping people, and I God has equipped me to show people how to get out of that trap, how to get out of darkness, how to escape, how to overcome, how to be victorious, because he has done it for me. December 15, 2020, I was on my way. In fact, I was already to work and walking in the school. I worked at a private Christian school. All of a sudden, my leg gave way, my right leg, and I didn't know what was going on. I had no control. And so they rushed me into the office, got me in a chair, called my daughter, and um, she came to assist me. They wheeled me out. And all that was going through my mind was, oh, my God, I can't work on my shift. Um, I was concerned. I didn't want to mess up the schedule. All these things were happening with me because... I wanted to be committed to where God had placed me, and I was on assignment at this school. I felt broken, and so I I looked forward to ministering to the children, and in fact, when this happened, one of the students was coming around the corner. She said, oh, Miss Elizabeth, what happened? And I was in so much pain, I couldn't answer her, and she saw me, and she started crying, and I thank God for the compassion that the children have for me. But I also thought about how I was putting my daughter out um, that afternoon because she has a family. She has two young boys, and she has a husband, and she was at work, and she had to leave um, her job, even though she worked at home at that time. All of these things were running to my mind, and I kept praying, Lord, I'm so sorry, and I kept telling her I'm so sorry. But she said, Mommy, look, let's deal with this. You're hurt. You went to the emergency room. They took x-rays, they gave me a shot for the pain, but they still couldn't find out what the problem was. So I had um, ended up taking an MRI and found out that I had two torn meniscus, and um, that's very painful. And for those of you who know about issues with your leg and um, having torn ligaments, it's not easy. In fact, I'm still going through my night, but can I tell you, I sought God I went to an orthopedic doctor. Um, they couldn't help as much. All they get, gave you was shots and um, medication, narcotic drugs, those things that would help you get through. That wasn't me. They mentioned um, surgery, and I didn't have the funds for the surgery. So I said, God, your word says miracles of healings in First Corinthians 12. So I'm going to see how you're going to get me out of this. And from then to now, God has been giving me um, healings in measures. Because sometimes, like I say, your night could be long. I first started off with a walker. That was annoying because I would have to go step by step with this four-prong long, um, four-prong legged but um, instrument, and I was frustrated because, you know, you're used to getting up, walking, and getting to and fro in record time. So I said, God, help me. And as I went through this session, the first doctor didn't work out. I went to another doctor. I went to Kyle, a practic doctor. That helped for a spell. But I noticed that I was eventually getting healed because I didn't have to use to walk anymore. Um, I started using the knee brace. I had a cane. And so the healing was in process. 
Okay. And I kept giving God praise. And then one day I was in so much pain. I cried to the Lord and half of the pain lifted. And I said, God, thank you. I was able to bear it. And then I realized I'm going to trust in God to take me through this. I finally got to the last doctor, which I'm at now, and God gave me help. I am now walking. I am now running. Glory be to God. The only thing I usually use right now is a knee brace around the ligament to give it support because it's on the process of healing. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. And so I have a compassion for those persons who I see who are using walkers and other instruments to help them get around. I pray for their healing in Jesus' name. But I want to let you know, as you seek God to come out of your brokenness, as you seek him, as you continue to be patient during your time and your night, God will come through. He will not fail. He will come through. He said we're overcomers. We're more than conquerors. And so I want to encourage you with that. And I pray in the name of Jesus that God will show you how to seek him that God will show you who to go to if you need to go to a doctor, if you need to go to a counselor. He will give you the answer. He will show you. You see the gentleman in Acts 9, he was immediately healed through the miracle power of God through his apostle Peter. God is able to do just what he says he will do. Amen? Glory be to God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We thank you for your concern, your love. We thank you for your power. We thank you for the many ways we can be healed. Your miracle power working through your servants, Father God. Um, Us being in the right place at the right time, going to the right physician, the right counselor. Heavenly Father, lead us in the way in which we ought to go to get our deliverance in the name of Jesus, because you wish that we be healed. You want us to be delivered. You want us to have this abundant life. And so we pray for those that are going through their broken state, those that are going through troubled marriages, those that do not have peace. You say you'll keep us in perfect peace whose minds are stayed on thee. And so, Father God, we pray for them today. We lift them up before you, Lord God. We call for the answer in their life we decree and declare victory in the name of Jesus we decree and declare breakthrough in the name of Jesus those that are listening those that are attentive those that can hear and receive your word that can receive understanding and go forward those who can believe father God we pray and agree with them father God for the answers and for you to come through in the name of Jesus, for them to walk through this storm, Father God, and know that you're with them always, that you'll never leave them nor forsake them, Father God, that they will stand in your word and believe your word, Father God, that you mean what you say, hallelujah, and when they call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved, glory be to God, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. What a mighty God we serve. What an awesome God we serve. Father God, we thank you that you hear our prayer. You hear our cry, Father God, and you will send help in the name of Jesus. Help us to be patient, Lord. We know that patience means long-suffering. So, Father God, relieve us of the pain. In the name of Jesus, whatever we're going through, relieve us of the brokenheartedness, whatever we're going through, Father God. We cry on you, we call on you, and we thank you that you hear us, Lord. Bless your holy name. Glory be to God. Father God, I want to also pray that give us an increased thirst to seek and to understand and read your word, Father God. Because your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So we look to you, Lord Jesus. And we continue to repeat the scripture as we will lift up our eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh our help and our help cometh from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, until another session, until the next time, may God truly bless you and keep you covered and give you what you need. Amen.